That's good. <laughs> good to be here. pray. Let's take a moment and be still before God. Father God, I thank you that you know all and see all. You know when we sit, you know when we rise. Help us have the right responses. Help us to have the right actions. Help us not to get all oh, so emotional, but respond with the right emotions. Lord, as we open our word, as we hear from you today, take my words, may they inform us, may they inspire us. Lord God, may they be what you would have me say here in this place, over these next few moments, in Jesus' name, Amen. Welcome to you if you're joining us online and welcome to you who are here in person most Sundays, unless you're off somewhere travelling. Doing a little series over the next couple of weeks called Don't Be So Emotional and today we're angry like Jesus. Hello, do we know anyone who's angry right now? How do we hangle, hangle, hanger? There we go. <laughs> How do we handle anger? Now Jesus, he was loving and compassionate and full of grace, full of mercy. Oh, sweet little Jesus. Amen, anybody? We love that Jesus, don't we? He throws everything out of the temple. Oh, golly, we've got hecklers. <laughs> He got angry. Jesus got angry. And we'll see it shortly. Anyone see the plane in the sky last week? Someone was a bit angry at Anastasia Palaszczuk. Did anyone see it? I saw it faintly. Apparently, she was heartless. There's a big sign being trailed across our sky at the back of a plane. There's also another one uh, late last week. I can't remember what that was saying, but that was a bit more positive, I think. <laughs> People get angry. People get all heated up. People get annoyed. People get frustrated. Is it a sin to be angry? Well, no. Being angry isn't a sin. But it can quickly lead to destructive, ungodly, wrong behaviour. We're reminded in Ephesians chapter 4, up there for you, very clearly, in your anger, do not sin. And do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. That's the bit we need to remember. That's the bit we need to highlight. That's the bit we need to underline. Do not give the devil a place, room, access. Do not give the devil a foothold. Friends, be a good witness. Jesus is entering Jerusalem. It's just before Passover. Every Jew in the Roman Empire travelled to Jerusalem for Passover. Jesus will soon give his life. We're heading up to the temple. There's greed, abuse, misuse of the Father's house. And we pick up the story at Matthew 21, 12 to 14. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you have made it into a den 
of robbers. My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it into a den of robbers. Then the blind, the lame, came to him at the temple and he healed them. You may recall in John's Gospel, we got a bit more excited. Jesus makes a whip whoosh, and drives them out. A bit more exciting. He was angry. He flipped over the tables. You know, there would have been a big scene and commotion. But Jesus is known for his love, not his anger. He loved the outcast. He touched the lepers. He forgave the sinners. He inspired people. He transformed lives. Love, not anger. When Jesus got angry, if you notice, notice what he was angry about. Our first point today, Jesus was angry on behalf of those who were mistreated. Even betrayed, scammed, robbed. He never got angry when someone criticised him, disagreed with his views. Well, that's only Joseph's son. Nothing good comes from Nazareth. Jesus got angry when others were hurting. Maybe you need to do an anger audit today. Why are you so emotional? Why are you so angry? Why do you have a short fuse? What pushes your buttons? What is the root cause there? Maybe you need to do some work on that. Is it unhealthy? Is it affecting your life? Jesus wasn't mad about what people did to him. He was angry at those who dishonoured his father's house. Mistreated people, cheated on them, hiked up the price of doves that they needed to buy for their offering and for their sacrifice. Second thing, when Jesus got angry, he flipped tables, he didn't flip people. He flipped the tables. He didn't flip people. He didn't punch or swear anyone. He didn't yell or scream. He flipped the tables. The tables. Interesting, isn't it? Because they represented the system that supported the mistreatment that was going on. That's where the people were being mistreated and robbed. It was a captured audience. He turned the tables, disrupted the system that perpetuated this injustice. We need to stop injustice, don't we? We should be very careful. When we feel so strongly about something, it's easy to translate our perspective to a righteous posture. Just because we feel strongly about something doesn't mean we are right all of the time. It doesn't mean that we should be looking for tables or people to knock over. Right, I'm going to get that fixed and do that thing and you'll see that I... That wouldn't be any of you, would it? No, no. You wait, I'll get you. So many people, up on the screen there, in their effort to be right, they've forgotten to be loving. They've forgotten to be loving. Make sure we don't let our unrighteous anger justify 
any unloving, disruptive behaviour. Our goal isn't just to be right. Our goal is to be loving. Our goal is to have wisdom. Our goal is to show care and concern. Our goal is to be people of compassion. Our goal is to have a listening ear. Yes, we need to honour God in our words and actions. And yes, we get angry. And yes, we get frustrated. But let us not sin. Third thing today. When Jesus got angry, he loved and healed those who were hurting. Remember who couldn't get into the temple. Remember who couldn't go and worship. The poor, the marginalised, the sick, the lame, the blind, the leper. He helped them. He helped the hurting. He healed the sick. Matthew 21, 14. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them, restored their lives. Imagine if this happened today. Imagine the news. Corruption at the church. Corruption at the temple. Man chucks, <laughs> man turns over tables. It would be a big news story, wouldn't it? Our Facebook pages would light up. Exposing corruption. Pastors scamming people. Yes, that sometimes happens, doesn't it? We've seen those headlines. Last week this dove was three dollars and now it's thirteen. <laughs> Let's expose things that are wrong. Think about those who are hurting. Think about those who are mistreated. Jesus did. Pharisees, Pontius Pilate, Herod, Judas, Peter, Jesus didn't cancel any of them. The Pharisees were wrong. Pilate was wrong. Herod was wrong. Peter was wrong. Judas was wrong. Just because they were wrong didn't mean that he cancelled them out. I'm so thankful. God cancelled my sin, but he hasn't cancelled me. Come to me, he said. Colossians, 3, uh, Colossians 2, 13. For he, God, forgave all our sins. He cancelled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. Friends, in this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. Glad God cancelled my sin and your sin. But he didn't cancel us. He didn't shut the door in our face, turn the table and say there's no room for you. He cancelled our sin and welcomed us. Who is Jesus angry at? Anything that keeps people from the Father. Anything that keeps people from a right relationship with Him. I thank God that we can get angry about different problems and frustrated and concerned as we fight for a different solution, as we fight for our marriages, as we fight for our relationships, as we take a stand for those that have no voice. We can stand in the gap in Jesus' name. Get angry about injustice, discrimination, the poor, the homeless, the unborn child. We have a very divided world. 
that needs a united church. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. Let's be angry at the devil. He steals, he destroys, he kills, takes joy, destroys lives. Work to bring healing and hope to the hurting. Work at that. Live for that. Champion that. So they will become fully devoted followers of Jesus. Let us work at that. Let us get emotional about that. Let us get on task about that. Friends, in your anger, do not sin. Do not turn tables, but love people. Make a difference. Make a difference. As I finish up on the screen there, our goal isn't just to be right, but to be loving. Let's turn those tables of injustice and let us welcome people so they can become fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Amen.